All right, so let's talk about the maximum likelihood estimators for a logistic regression, okay? And we're gonna, we're basically gonna derive how to get to the equation that you would need to solve to find the maximum likelihood estimators for a logistic regression. Um, I do want to warn you coming into this, two things. First, it's kind of a long derivation. We're gonna take it slow and we're gonna get there. Um, second thing is, you may not be satisfied with the answer when we get to the end because it's not a closed form solution, okay? So you're still gonna need to use a computer algorithm to kinda uh, iterate through and solve that equation, okay? But we're gonna get to what that equation is. Um, so starting with, let's just kinda def define what's going on here. Uh, we have X and Y data, right? And um, our Y data is like zero, one type data. Okay, so y's are zeros and ones. Now, what distribution do we know of that has zeros and ones, right? The Bernoulli distribution. So y is gonna be assumed to follow the Bernoulli distribution. And the um, probability of success for this Bernoulli distribution, it's gonna have something to do with those x's that we collected, okay? And I'm gonna note this with pi x i, okay, and x's are like a vector of x's. So to note that it's a vector, I'm gonna put like a little squiggly line or arrow line up top over it, okay? So pi is like our logistic regression uh, formula, all right? X i's are what we, um, you know, this is what we have data on. We have data on a, a y variable that's zero and one, and then x i's, which are like our covariates. Okay, I um, just want to point out that this is a vector, and it, the first is 1, then x1i, x2i, etc., until I get to xki. Okay, um, now I'm also going to use uh, beta, right, which are my... Um, my regression coefficients, right? And that's ultimately what I want to estimate. I want to estimate what is beta. Um, beta is also gonna be a vector. I'll have beta naught, so I have that intercept term. Beta one, beta two, all the way till I get to beta k. Okay, so then if I have xi transpose times beta, right? This would be, you know, beta naught plus beta one x one i plus dot 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 beta k times x k i right so this is um you know the, these betas are basically what we want to estimate at the end of the day we want to know how um y is connected to x and that's through beta right so ultimately beta is what we want to estimate those are our regression coefficients all right, so I mentioned that pi, this is our uh, logistic regression um, equation. So pi for x, okay, this equals uh, exp, which is basically e to the power of, okay, e to the power of um, xi transpose times beta, right? So e to the power of basically all this, and I'm just writing it shorthand using matrix notation. Okay, divided by one plus exp xi transpose times beta. Okay, um, writing this over and over again is going to become, make my, eye, my arm tired. So I'm going to uh, basically create a variable that's basically for convenience. All right, so I have this new i, which is gonna be um, e to the power of xi transpose times beta, all right? So now pi can be written a little more simple as basically, this is basically nu divided by one plus nu i, all right? Okay, all of this is to build up to what is the likelihood function, right? Because we're trying to find the likelihood function estimators. So the likelihood, which is a function of our betas, okay, the likelihood uh, equals, 
what is this? It says the product of, um, it's basically the probability of observing that sample of yi's, right? So if, if each uh, y is independent, then this would basically just be the product of the probability of each of the y's. Now, so from the product, from i equals 1 to n, okay, uh, the probability of um, each of these y's, this is a Bernoulli distribution, right? What is a Bernoulli distribution? Um, it's p, so in this case this would be pi xi to the power of yi, right? So if yi is 1, then it would basically just be equal to p. And then 1 minus uh, pi i, okay? to the power of one minus yi, right? So if y is zero, then basically that goes away and then you end up having this probability over here. So this is the Bernoulli um, probability distribution function. All right, okay, so now what do I need to do? I need to, let's see if I can um, simplify this a little bit uh, before I move on. So let's go ahead and plug in what is x, um, pi pi of xi, okay? So I have the product from i equals one to n, oops, okay, of nu i, nu i divided by one plus nu i to the power of yi, and then one minus nu i, uh, one plus nu i to the power of one minus yi. All right, so all I've done is basically plugged in what is pi of xi into my equation. All right, um, I can simplify this instead of this being one, right? That's the same thing as one plus nu i divided by one plus nu i, right? So basically I just converted that one into be a fraction. Now I have similar um, or like denominators and I can simplify this. So this then, this minus sign becomes up here, right? And our denominator just becomes one plus nu i. Nice thing about doing that is these guys cancel. And now what do I have? Let me go ahead and rewrite this. Okay, nu i, one plus nu i to the power of y i, didn't do anything there. But now I have negative, nope, sorry. I have one in my numerator now, and then one plus nu i, one minus y i, to the power of one minus i, okay? All right, so that was just a little bit of simplification there. All right, so now I'm ready to go ahead and find my log likelihood. Now, I know I have my likelihood, why am I gonna find a log likelihood? Um, the maximum of a log likelihood is the same as the maximum of a likelihood. And usually, um, you know, we will use the log likelihood because it'll kind of make things a lot easier for us to find the derivative and solve, okay? So it's kind of out of convenience that we use log likelihood, so let's go ahead and do that. How do you do that? You take the log of both sides. So, right. so we would have ln, right, which is our log of the likelihood function, okay? Sometimes people use a capital L for the likelihood function and then a lowercase l for the log likelihood, All right? What happens when you take the um, log of a bunch of products? They all become sums, right? So now I have a sum. That's one of the main reasons why we like using log, okay? All right, now when I take the log, or ln, um, actually I'll just go ahead and write it first, ni, one plus ni, or nu i to the power of um, yi, and then this product, right, there's a product between here, so that's gonna become a plus sign. So plus the ln of one over one plus nu i to the power one minus yi. Okay, so remember your uh, properties for log. Uh, basically this, this power is gonna drop down, okay? The power will drop down. And this division can become 
Uh, what's in the numerator will be basically positive, and what's in the denominator will be negative. So what do I end up with? I have yi, oh, let me not forget my sum. Okay, so the sum is i equals one to n of yi ln of nu i, okay, uh, minus, because I have that denominator there, minus um, ln of one plus nu i, okay, that yi is being multiplied by both of those. Okay, so I basically have broken up that fraction. All right, same thing goes over here. I have plus one minus yi. Now the ln of one is just zero, so I can just basically just drop it. And then I have um, times minus ln of one plus nu i. Okay? Okay. So now let's do some simplification. So go ahead, bring this guy in, right? Distribute him and um, let's see, also go ahead and distribute this guy, okay? So let's see what happens when we do that. We're gonna have some nice cancellation. Y i l n of nu i minus y i ln of one plus nu i, okay? So that was me distributing this yi. All right, then I have um, minus, so I'm multiplying this by the one, ln of one plus nu i, okay? Now I'm multiplying it by the negative y, and I get plus uh, yi, oops, ln one plus nu i. All right. Okay, so let's see what cancels. Anything cancel here? All right, it looks like this guy and this guy are exactly the same and one's positive and one's negative. So I'm left with this guy and this guy. So what do I have? I have y i l n of nu i minus the ln of one plus nu i. Okay, so far so good. All right, so this is my log likelihood function. It's as simple as I can make it, but I saw that nu i, which was for convenience, so let's go ahead and plug it in now. All right, so let's plug in what is nu i. Okay, this is going to equal i equals one to n. All right, um, the ln of e to the power of x transpose times beta, okay, all right, minus ln of one plus e to the power of x transpose times beta, all right. What happens when you take ln of e to the power of? They basically cancel, okay, so this is what I have. Okay, right, these guys basically cancel each other. And we still have ln of one plus e to the power of xi transpose times beta. All right. This is my log likelihood function, as simple as it's gonna get, okay? So, once I've done all that simplification, I'm ready to maximize it, right? How do I maximize the log likelihood? I need to take the derivative with respect to beta and then set that equal to zero, right? And we can prove that it's the maximum by finding the second derivative. Um, I will just erase what I have right here, let's see. Okay, so we need to take the derivative of this guy with respect to beta. Okay, so let's see. I am, let's see, I'll, I know I have shadows. I'm gonna just do this. The ln likelihood. 
Oops, that should have been a... Okay, so let's see what we have when we take the derivative of this guy with respect to beta, okay? Um, this first term, so we still have this summation out front, okay? The first term will have that yi times um, xi, all right, transpose, right? So this is a vector, so I'm taking the derivative with respect to a vector, so my answer is going to be a vector. All right, um, there's gonna be a different derivative for every, um, well, k plus one different derivatives, right? This is a vector of derivatives. All right, minus, minus, now I need to take the derivative of this guy. Now remember, how do you take the derivative of ln? You have one over what's inside the parentheses. So one over one plus e to the power of xi times beta transpose, xi transpose times beta, okay? Then I would need to take the derivative of the denominator with respect to beta. So what would that be? That would basically be, the one would go away, and then we would have e to the power of, so instead of one on top here, I would have e to the power of xi transpose times beta, right? And then I would need to, I'm basically using a chain rule for der taking derivatives, right? So then I would need to take the derivative of um, e to the power of xi times beta, which would then just be xi transpose. All right. Okay, so both of these have xi transpose in them, so I can kind of pull that guy out. So I have yi minus e to the power of x uh, i transpose times beta divided by one plus um, e to the x i transpose times beta. Okay, all of this is being times x i transpose. All right, notice that this guy is exactly what pi is. So I end up with yi minus pi for xi times xi transpose. All right, that's as simple as you're gonna get. That is the derivative. You set this equal to zero, the derivative with, regards, with respect to beta. You set this equal to zero and you solve. Now, you see here has beta, right? And you see how beta is in the exponent. That's why this, you cannot solve this. You cannot solve for beta uh, in a closed form, right? So we can solve for it using um, basically a computer algorithm that basically searches for where the maximum of this function, or where this function equals zero, right? So it, it basically searches for um, where when, when you use this function where it's the closest to zero, all right? And uh, this, this function, this is called the score function or score vector, okay? So you might see that referred to as the score vector. Um, you can prove that uh, this has, um, you know, that this is the maximum and not just, um, you know, a, uh, it could, it, could, it could be a minimum, right? Because the derivative equals zero, both at maximums and minimums, right? Uh, you can prove that this is a maximum by finding the second derivative, um, but that's, that's a conversation for another, another video. So that, that does it for this video. You uh, would need to uh, use a computer algorithm to solve this equation, and then you would have the maximum likelihood estimator um, for, for beta. All right, thanks for watching.